uh, Huawei. And I am planning to apply for SRE positions or SDE positions. SRE is like site reliability or SDE, right? Um, and yeah, I'm in the middle of uh, trying to interview. Yeah. In, in Huawei, which location are you in? I'm in uh, Canada. Oh yeah, I'm I'm in Canada too. I actually oh. I, I am a I'm a developer for a Scotia Bank uh, for uh, yeah for Treasury. So basically, I've been developing uh, internally internally used website to support uh, trading activities. So it's not like a lot lot of website, just a smaller website for a group of people that use internally. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I actually don't have a lot of uh, interview coming up. I have only have Amazon coming up, but I haven't decided data yet, so I'm still preparing for it. Right, right, I see. Is it for like a senior position, SDE2 or, or entry level? Well, it's only for entry level. I actually not from a CS background, I'm from a math background. So uh -oh. I started post. That's, that's better. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, it is, it is, it is all right. Uh, well, I uh, actually used to work in finance, and now I, I switched to uh, uh... I mean, kind of, I mean, kind of switch, switching. Because I'm still doing a bit of both, actually. Uh, and I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. That's cool. All right, uh, let's see if I can uh, get it started. We can yeah, catch up uh, after this. So it's uh, your turn to interview me, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's see a problem. So root of a number. So many times we need to re-implement basic functions without using any standard library functions already implemented. For example, when designing a chip that requires very little memory space. OK, yeah. In this question, we'll implement a function called root that calculates the nth root of a number. The function takes a non-negative number x and a positive number integer n. OK, so the first number can be, uh, let's see, and returns the nth positive root of x with a, with a margin of error of 0. .0. OK, suppose the real root is y. Then the error is y minus the root, I see. And must find that the y minus root is less than, OK. So the error margin basically is that. Don't be intimidated by the question. <laughs> well, while there are many algorithms to calculate roots that, are, they, that require prior knowledge of numerical analysis, there is also an elementary method which doesn't require more than uh, guessing and checking. Try to think more in terms of the latter. OK, so my algorithm should be focused on guessing and checking, I see. Make sure your algorithm is efficient and analyze time and com space complexities. So for example, it gives this as an example. Um, if you have the input is 7 and n is 3, you are getting the nth root. So, OK, so basically it's 7 raised to 1 over 3, something like this. And and to, uh, OK, and to a third decimal. So uh, this is the, the question, basically, to try to find the, the nth root of a number, correct? And this number yeah. it can be a floating number, or uh, uh, no? Uh, sorry, no, yeah. Let's Go only ahead. worry about in, let's only worry about integer for now. Oh, uh, but yeah, it says floating number, but uh, I don't think that uh, make it, uh, make a difference in this problem. Actually, you can assume that okay, it says floating. Uh, let's go with floating. Uh, I see. Oh, okay. I, I think what you mean is that. It, it won't make a difference because the point they're, they're referring to the decimal numbers in terms of the solution, because the solution yeah. will be. I see. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK. All right, so the first method that I can think of is, um, so what does this mean? How do we find this without using the any like any standard library? So I basically I cannot use the Pow library, right? Mm. Well, you yeah you can you 
you you you are able to use uh, the power library, but you should not not be able to use the square root function. You can you can do you can do something to a power, but just not to the square root because if you do it to the square root it directly, just solve it directly, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Uh, yeah, but also if I do power function, it, it will solve solve it directly, right? Uh, mm, I mean, let, yeah. Let me clarify the question a little bit. So, uh, yeah, don't use something like one to the three. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So that. Yeah, I mean that. What, what, there's no point to do it, but 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 you 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 need to use this power function at some point. I I, I must say, otherwise I don't want to point you to the wrong wrong direction. But oh, okay. So I I can use it, just not for uh, okay, and not to come with that. I I see what you're saying. No, not to okay. uh, skip the question, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So this is basically um. This is going to be equal to uh, a number like uh, number n uh, num uh, ta uh, times num times num uh, for um, three times. Uh, and this is going to, should give me seven. So we need to calculate basically, um, hmm, let's see, OK. So we could do an iteration in, in the sense that we can um, we need to find this out. <clears throat> it's good that you're, you're thinking along this direction. I like it that you times a number that you're looking for by itself three times, right? Mm -hmm. And then you reach, I mean, if you find a number, let's say a Y, and then the Y times Y times Y again, which is three times, if that's exactly equal to seven, you are done. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for most of, so for most of time, unfortunately you have to keep looking. So let's say, and and that's exactly what you want. Um, I mean, you can. I mean, let let let's just talk on the piece of paper before we put on the code. I think the coding okay. is fairly easy for you. So yeah, exactly. You need some sort of loop exactly to keep help you to try. So let 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 let's think of it like in a brute force approach, right? So how how would you? Uh, yeah. How what what I mean? What kind of number would you start to try? Mm -hmm. Right, of and, course. And, and, and then we can we can go there and expand uh, our our thought. Um, yeah, excellent. So uh, um, I was uh, thinking of this as you mentioned, but in also in my mind I was saying this this would work if they were integers. Our output or result were integers, but if it's uh, r uh, rational numbers, then we do have an unlimited number of rational numbers, right? But because the idea is to loop over, basically, we will look over rational uh, numbers from 1.001 all the way to um, possibly either 7 over 2 or the square root of 7. Of seven. I don't think we need to get all the way to 7. Uh, well, it depends. If the number n is 1, we actually don't need to go to 7. So it will depend on our number number. Um, and here, we would also iterate, but only n times, loop n times. And we will check if our number here, let's say our number here is, uh, our number here is uh, x or idx index. We have an index. So if uh, by the end of the looping n times, if idx um, uh, times idx, uh, all the n times, at the end, if idx is equal to our my number, my up, um, my uh, seven x number, then I can return this as my answer. 
Um, else, I just continue to loop through all of these numbers, but then it will be a lot of numbers, right? Perfect. This will be a really, really brute force approach. Yeah, but uh, actually, you you have made a lot of progress, I must say. You already 50% solved the problem. So um, you, you're thinking along the, uh, the direction that you want to go, which is really good. So now let's talk, think about the optimization. OK, so I really like it that you're thinking along the line where you say keep trying between one and seven. And so one, one, one more um, discussion I, I can have with you is, is you know the error, right? So if the error is too big or is the, level, the error is too small on the, on the negative, on the negative side, I mean, so we, we are, so we are okay with the error is within 0 0.0, I think 0 0.001 or something. Yes. Yeah. So, so within the bound of error, right? Plus or minus 0, 0, 0 0.001, we are good. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if the error is too big, that means the number that you try is too big. If the error is too small on the negative side, which is too big, I mean, on the absolute value, it's mm -hmm. too small. So we can bump up the, you're trying a little bit more, right? Because mm -hmm. you know your error. And mm -hmm. then you're aiming, basically you're aiming your error within a okay threshold that you can just accept to return the number. Am I making sense to you? Yeah, yeah, that's, so yeah, so this, so there's two things that I, I am thinking of based on what you're mentioning. Um, my, my first thing, and basically a really fast approach is to change this. As I was thinking, um, instead of this, uh, I will change to if um, basically the the index where I'm looping, like all these numbers, list of numbers, which probably is like about a thousand or, or in the thousands, if this uh, minus uh, my x number, which is my my input number, if the absolute value of this uh, difference is less or equal. That or less than 0 0.001, then you do return that as uh, you you do return that as true. Mm -hmm. Return Co IDX. Um, Correct. Right. Um, I am thinking this is one approach. Another approach is basically just to iterate over the error. Um, and try to, but I I will need to think that approach better. I think this approach actually may work. Hang on. So what what do you mean by each way over the error? Oh, um, as in, um, let me think. No, actually, never mind. <laughs> I, I was just uh, trying to think if I can uh, make a variable um, that uh, basically signifies the, the error or the difference um, between my x and my output, and try to find a number that will uh, that may give us that error. But no, no. Actually, when I'm thinking that out loud or, or a little bit in depth. Um, it doesn't really work. Um, so I, I apologize for that. Uh, do you think the com I am thinking that the complexity of this, though, uh, I am not sure if this uh, is appropriate because the complexity of this is about n, where in this case, n is n is the amount of numbers from 0 0.00, from 1.001 to 6.999. Um, so this is actually a lot of numbers. Yeah, yeah, you, you're right. I mean, in a proof of approach, you're right. That's a lot of trying. Actually, you don't have to do, you don't have to do that much. So let's take a, uh, and also don't worry about this part. And, uh, and in this part, you are allowed to use the power function. Okay, so you keep 
it basically multiplying by itself. In this part, you can use a power function, so don't worry about this part. So, um, I at this at this point, I think you are pretty close to the solution. But I don't want to tell you the optimized um, time complexity because if I told you that, I would probably give away the, the problem. Mm -hmm. So let, let's take, let's take one step back, okay? And, and then, then think about how can we solve it on a piece of paper, okay? I think that might help. The coding, again, the coding is very easy. I have a very strong confidence that you can code it up based on what I'm seeing right now. So, <laughs> so let's take a spec, uh, one step back on the face, solve it on a piece of paper. So let's try, so let's say the candidate, that's exactly uh, like what you have right now. So let's say the candidate right now is between, let's say, I don't know, zero and seven in this case. Okay, I mean, we can try anything. Does it make sense? Or you can try one to seven, I mean, or I mean, for the sake of it, I'm gonna try from zero and seven, expand it a little bit more. Okay, does it make sense? Sorry, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I think there was uh, some networking problem. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Hello. Can you, hear me? Can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, now. Sorry, I lost you. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it's a bit, uh, don't, don't be sorry. It's, it's, I don't think, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's a networking problem. Anyway, so let's just carry on the discussion. So, so let's oh, say. My goodness. Oh, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm losing you again. Can you, can you hear me? Oh, gee. Oh. Uh, can you hear me okay? Or we can use Zoom if you want. I'm, I'm not sure if, if we can switch to Zoom is faster. Can you, can you, can you see the link? Yeah, I can okay. sing. Uh, but uh, uh, you, you, you're you're working now, though. Um, yeah. No, you're right. Hello, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, I changed networks. I don't know if that makes a difference. Oh, okay, perfect. I, I, I think. Uh... Yeah, I cannot hear. You. I'm gonna uh, uh, join on on Zoom. I'm gonna close this. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Uh, so let's carry on the discussion. So, um, you, you, okay, you can still see this. You can still see the screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's say initially you want to try any anything. I mean, initially you you said you, you want to try between one and seven. Okay, and then let's say that I want to expand the universe a little bit more. You can try between zero and seven. So that's the other possibility. That you want to try okay between zero and seven okay mm -hmm. you, yeah you are you so okay okay good that you're following so let's say i have so many numbers to try and the, the first thing i want to try will be the one at the middle does it make sense the what sorry so i have i have so many i have so many rational number i want i, I can try mm -hmm. right between zero and seven that's it infinite amount of uh, rational number rational numbers yeah yeah so the the one that i want to try is the middle one mm -hmm. yeah so the middle one will be 3.5 mm -hmm. okay so now i'm gonna try oh, 3. of course <laughs> yeah i want to try 3.5 and then look at 
Look right or look left. Exactly. You got it. You got yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Oh my goodness. That's that was so obvious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me try to so, put it. Uh, sorry, yeah, go so ahead. Let, me, uh, let, let me ask you uh, what would be the time complexity if we follow this approach to try? Yeah. <clears throat> um, if we follow this approach, it would still be n, but n would be different in this case. n would be um, the numbers from, it will be n over, it will be. Um, basically x over two uh, times, in this case, three zero, right? Times a thousand. Um, well, that, that would be our n. This um, is actually, yeah, you, so you, you're almost there. This, this is actually- No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, because, because at every loop, I just check the from the middle um, exactly. so this is actually like the binary search exactly there you go uh, perfect so actually and uh the binary search is log n uh where my n is is uh in this case my n is actually seven my x yeah wow oh it does reduce the number a bunch yeah exactly that's 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 uh, where you want to go. And uh, now if you're ready to call it up, I think you have a pretty good idea uh, after our discussion. Let's go. Yeah, okay. So I would start by defining uh, um, middle. In this case, my middle would be x uh, over two. Um, yeah. Then what I will do is loop while and my my error uh, is going to be equal to zero point zero zero one. Well, and and yeah. Uh, so actually, actually, my I need to modify my loop here. Um, let me see. Well, oh, and so this is why I'm practicing <laughs> mock interviews is because I, I can get um, the logic and all these things eventually, but I do get nervous and I, I start freaking out. So, and I'm just gonna try to wait a little bit and continue. In this case, it's a while loop uh, with a condition. I will come back to this condition uh, in a little bit. And in this case, I will check, um, Uh, you mentioned that I can use a power operator here. In this case, the power, I believe, is um, my initial index. My initial index will be my middle, my middle. And I, uh, I can do it to uh, three, right? And this will be my, uh, my uh, sorry, n, basically. And this will be my uh, current check. Yeah. Um, and what I'm going to check is if the absolute value of um, the middle. No, I don't want to check the absolute value now because I want to know if I'm going to go right and I'm, or I'm going to go left. So if, um, let me see. So if my current check is um, I'm going to check if my number x minus the current check is greater than zero zero point zero zero one, then my error or error threshold. Uh, so. Uh, let me see if x minus my current check is greater than the error, then I'm gonna go to the middle of the right. 
So I will check my new middle is going to be equal to um, not x over two, but let me see. Um, so it'll be x over the x over two, two x. Um, the middle for that would be Uh, let me see. Um, it's plus. One. <laughs> uh, this is so simple. One sec. Um, middle plus equal to middle. The you know, plus um, from here to here. I need just a, a little bit of paper to do my operation. So, zero to n, n or two is here. Um, my next middle is going to be here, and that is going to be n over two plus uh, n minus n over two. Um, so in this case, n over two. So in this case, it's just plus middle. It, no, it doesn't make sense. Um, New middle is going to be equal to. Well, well. Uh, let, let me let me give you another hint in here. Um, when so let's 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 take one step back and look at this statement here. So, you are basically for a binary research, you have a upper bound, you have a lower bound, and then mm -hmm. basically you you slowly narrow down your search based on your error, right? So basically mm -hmm. like very big bound and then go smaller and smaller, smaller and then narrow it down to the point where you are okay with the error. Mm -hmm. So if the error is too big or the error is too small, you want to change your upper bound or lower bound. Oh, that is also a, a, a way to do it. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, upper bound would be my case. Yeah, look, I mean, look back to look back to this this example, right? We are, we are candidates. Yeah, you candidate literally put bound. it there for me. <laughs> 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 you literally put it there for me. <laughs> um, uh, so in this case, my new uh, what's gonna happen is my uh, if I'm gonna go to a right, my lower is going to be equal to my my actual middle. Exactly. There you go. Perfect. And yeah, and my middle is going to be equal to um, um, same one though. A is uh, upper over upper minus no upper plus plus middle over two. Um, actually, sorry, just gonna reorganize the code a little bit. A little. Um, the opposite happens. All right, what I will do is change my upper to the middle. Um, in this case, and this would happen for both of them. My new middle is going to be here. So, um, this uh, else, um, if it's if I uh, is is less than no, not less than the error. 
No, if it's, yeah, if it's else, if it's equal to the error, I'm going to return um, my actual, in this case, it will be my middle. Uh, else, just um, my new middle is going to be here, and I'm going to loop again. And I would loop in this case while middle is um, greater than one. Um, I'm gonna go to washroom. Can I go to washroom? And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. But um, one thing to look after is the thing about in terms of a absolute, absolute error, absolute error, absolute error. Okay. Yeah. Think, think about something along, think along those lines, and I'll come back with you very shortly. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So if. Yes. If seven minus oh, if Uh, it's going to be equal to this number times n. So if if x minus my current number, okay. So if x minus my current number is greater than the error. Sorry, how are you doing? <laughs> Um, I think I am understanding the issue here. So if X minus my, so let's say it's seven minus and the answer, the error, the number that I'm getting is something like 8.5. Um, so in this case, my error is going to be a negative. It means, and it means that this number is too big. Um, so in this case, um, it will go to here. And it, uh, if x, uh, because it will be a, this will be a negative number, right? Minus one point something. Um, in that case, I want to move it to the right. So my, so my, so I want to move it to the right. So my, upper. and. In the case that is too small, like 6.5, um, this will be, let's say 0 0.5. In the case that is, uh, this is too much larger than the error, we wanna move it to there. Um, what if, if, what if it's uh, seven point, uh, like what if it's actually seven? Um, this is going to be zero. Zero is going to be less than the error. So that is actually not what I want. Um, so I do want, um, the absolute value. What I, uh, okay. See, see. Mm -hmm. You are very close. You are really close. <laughs> so, um, if the absolute value, um, yeah, so if the absolute value of this is less than the, is less than the error, then, then is when I am going to return, um, my middle. Um, but when am I going to move to the right and when I'm going to move to the right? I'm going to move to the right if, if um, the difference is greater than 0 0.001. And I'm going to move to the left if the difference is greater, if the difference is uh, less than the negative of this. 
Um, so it's uh, minus the error. Yeah, so if there we, you go. Perfect. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. if the, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, uh, but this, uh, I think this, let's say, uh, let, let, let me check it. Okay. So if the X minus the current check, which is bigger than the error, means that, um, let's say X, X7 and 8.5, right? Okay, 8.5. 8 Okay. Uh, no, 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 6.5, this is, uh, because if this is greater, because this is greater than my error. So if this is greater than my error, it means that um, my number is too small, right? So, okay, so when it is too small, how would you want to update your upper bound and lower bound? If it's too small, uh, my if it's too small i want to yeah sorry i actually i want to make my lower bound higher yeah exactly and if it yeah. is uh too big um okay okay and let's yeah um, yeah that's that, that's that's really good yeah i think that's that's about it um if there is not an answer well there should be an answer but if there's not an answer i'll just return false um yeah sure yeah, yeah. There, it, it must be an answer so i think um in here in this statement you are safe to just do it else already because it must be um it, it might it, 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 if not like a, the area is not bigger than a, the 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 threshold or it's not smaller than a negative threshold then it has the to action, be in this yeah it, it must return and this is where you break out your loop mm -hmm. um oh hold on hold on uh one more thing to check is your your while loop condition mm -hmm. my middle My middle can can become an infinite loop. Possibly, potentially. Yeah. So, think about your your while loop condition. Is that to be the middle bigger than one, or should be something else? Mm -hmm. um, but all, all, all does all does it matter at this point? Because you basically break it off in here, though. Let me think. Yeah. 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 They. I think. Yeah. This is gonna be. Yeah. This is gonna work. Yeah um perfect yeah this is gonna work yeah. because you basically you exit from here yeah um i i i think so as well because there there has to be a number um it's it's really difficult for it not to be a number right no it's i don't think it's possible that there's not a number But it is taking a while though. Uh, I um, think the indentation is, oh, I think it should be okay. Yeah, I think it should be okay. Let me see. Mm. Mm. Let me oh, run sorry. it on my side. Give me one sec. Okay. Okay. Upper is X, lower middle is X over two. Okay, yeah, it is an infinite loop. Um, um, I don't think this is, uh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, I am running into else. So if x lower, uh, it's going to be equal to my middle. Upper is going to be equal to my middle. 
And then I'm going to do upper plus ah, lower over 2. It has to be lower over 2. Yeah, yeah. It should be lower over 2, yeah, correct. You know, it's equal to. I think, yeah, this is some problem with your IDE. I ran it on Google Colab, it's working. Oh, so uh, that, that, that's weird. It's probably, I don't know, I think Prime is having some issues, maybe. Yeah, so this is the number I, I, I just received. Uh, oops, I cannot type. It looks like, this looks like uh, 1. Uh, 1.9129438. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you got it actually. Yeah, yeah. I Technically, want... yeah. I think what I need to uh, do, I think, is um, format it so that it's only to three decimals. I cannot remember the the, the little method for that. Um, but yeah. it, it's it's okay. We... Well, this is Python two. I'm not sure this make a difference. I run it on. Google Colab, which is Python 3.7. Yeah. Uh, oh, they working. use Python 2. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But Let, let's check out yours. Um, I don't want to take too much time from, from your thing. But yeah, in this case, the, the complexity will went down drastically to uh, log in. That was, that was pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for your help. <laughs> yeah, oh, you no can worries. give me feedback yeah. afterward. Or you can yeah, give me I feedback now if you want. Uh, okay, yeah, I can give you some feedback uh, in case I forget. So it's good that you can come up with a uh, brute force approach. Also, you you uh, draw down some pseudo code that I know that you're gonna you can code up at the end. So I have confidence at that point. And um, I think the the point that you will struggle a little bit is um, uh, the come up with uh, the um, binary research. Optimal. Yeah, the optimization you struggle a little bit, but I I do like that when I when I was saying, uh, trying trying and then you 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 know that uh, the direction that uh, you want to try. And mm -hmm. one thing that I would brush off would be the template to use um for dynamic pro I don't dynamic for binary search. So the upper bounds and lower bounds that would come into very handy for the your, templates, right? So to have it ready instead of yeah, having yeah. to. Uh, figure it out at the moment. Yeah, exactly. And it's very short and very logical. So I think it's pretty good for memorization. I mean, that's how I, for myself, that's how I remember <laughs> some of the template that I, in my brain. I mean, a lot of people say don't memorize code. I, I, I also agree with that, but this is very short and very logical. So yeah, uh, it comes very handy when I got nervous. Yeah, yeah, same, same, same with me. Okay, yeah. thanks, so, so, thanks so much for, uh, for yeah, your help. No worries. Okay. Let me see what do I get. Okay, now you see me struggle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bracket match. Uh, string of bracket is Okay. Uh, Oh, okay. So good. Pretty clear the question. So, ah, okay. So, uh, this looks like uh, those are bracket and also all parentheses problem. I think the best way, uh, I don't like them. Honestly. <laughs> uh, I think the best way to solve them is use a stack. Uh, Correct me if I'm not in the right direction. Uh, okay, so if I have some given some constraint, okay, the length of it between one and 5,000. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, one edge case I'm thinking of, if, if I'm given like an empty string, I just return empty, right? Uh, that's zero, I think. Uh, 
that's one base base case I'm thinking off my head, right? So um, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I kind oh, of you, well, more. you're going to transfer actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so if let's say uh, one edge case I'm thinking of is if that's given like an empty string, so I'm going to return zero, oh. right? Um, yeah, because you don't have anything to add. Okay, so Correct. let's say, make sure to understand. So let's say if I'm given something looks like, uh, oops, uh, looks like this. Oh, ah. The, the uh, autocomplete here is very annoying, right? Yeah. <laughs> Most of them are useful, but not now. Yeah. So, in this case, I'm going to return the two, right? So because I have to have the two matches yeah, against that's, it. That's correct. So, so essentially, this problem can be turned around to see uh, how many how many uh, brackets not matched. Am I right? So because this is asking me how many extra do I need? Actually, it's asking me how many brackets is not being matched. For example, for the first case, uh, the number, so for example, the first case where is this one, the number number not match and not match actually equal to one. And mm -hmm. so the second case is number matches and not matches a zero. The third case will be number not match will be two in that case. So basically I'm figuring out how many not matched. So Anyway, so I think that how my thinking. So I'm thinking of a stack. Correct me if I'm not right. So let's say if um, we mm -hmm. so stack. It is uh, a good approach. Um, so for a stack, what would the complexity be like? It's going to be of uh, p of n for both time and space. Right. Um, so we can do that approach, and then we can optimize. But the, uh, uh, more, there's a more optimal approach that can save you uh, some space. Oh, okay. okay. But we can do both if if you want. So um, the the so the, the the one that if I can do better, then B O N will be B O one then. Yeah, like if you don't need to use a structure, um, that that would be better. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, let me think. Uh, I don't know, but let me let me let me try it to see. I mean, I think maybe I have at least I have a counter, so. I have a close and open brackets to keep track of uh, the the bracket that I'm I'm at and at, 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 at uh, each of the points. So, for example, when I scan through the first one, will be open like this. At this point, it's gonna be open equal to one, mm -hmm. right? And then when I add like this, so open equal to two, and then when I at this point um like this so at this point open equal to two and then close equal to one and then i'm mm -hmm. done uh and it, i mean if if that's the case i'm only need like a two counters but but the thing is i can, i don't know yeah so in this case uh so in this case either even like both of them like um open equal to two and close equal to two, which I don't know that, I mean, the ordering matters in here. Right, so so you're really in the right track in the sense that uh, some sort of counter or counters, maybe a counter can work, uh, but it's not only about the counter, but like when you're counting, right? So if you are counting here and then you're counting here, is different than when you're counting here and then here, right? 
Um, so oh. uh, as you're counting, maybe you're, you can keep track of uh, what's going on, or, or maybe you can set a condition. Um, uh, but as you're iterating, yeah, you, you are right. There is a difference between, uh, between the positions. It's not only about the character, but um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now I, I, I hope that I get what you said. So let me try again. So good that I get your confirmation that I'm in the right direction. So let's say, um, in here, I'm at open equal to one. And in here, maybe at this point, I can decrease the open becomes zero because it offsets it. Mm -hmm. And then, at this point, now the close it, or maybe I can have like open equal to negative one. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, and then, okay, um, boom, and this is not gonna work, <laughs> right? So this is a uh, red line. And then when I keep going, it will be like this. And at this point, it's open is gonna be zero. Um, so when open is equal to negative one, and that is a, this is a red line. Um, let me think. Um, so the boom, the boom, when does the boom happen? Well, right. the, the boom, yeah, I have a closed one, but I don't have the, I, I didn't start with an open one. Right. Uh, but uh, that happens, what happens to your counter, right? Your counter may be in a different. Well, it then, it, it um, what does it mean? So I open it. Actually, maybe one. you can have two counters. Okay, okay, two counters. Okay, so I've opened and then here close equal to, to one. And um, so at this point, I have a, maybe I have a, um, I could call it N or something, or total equal to zero. Uh, yeah, sorry, I actually didn't want to uh, like force you or, uh, into any way, but like, um, when I mention about two counters, but like two counters that are useful though, right? I, I think in this case, if you have an open and a close and what you're gonna do is subtract, that will be basically the same as this counter, what this counter is already doing, right? It doesn't add value. So maybe you can have a, an, a counter, a, an additional counter, but that does something else, checks, checks for something else that, that happens, right? Um, so I, I would suggest, Actually, let's take some a little bit more time and, and keep going on this example. Uh, and maybe keep going and see if uh, what happens when, when you close this. Um, what happens when there's more like booms? What happens when the, 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 this goes to like negative two or three? Let's check it out. Yeah, so I've opened up one. I've, in this case, uh, I have a... Uh, Total, I mean, this case is offsets it. So maybe, uh, maybe n equal to zero. I, I don't know. Because I have something to offset, offset against it now becomes zero. And then. Actually, uh, actually, uh, sorry, sorry. Let's, um, uh, what I meant to say is like, uh, let's just try to go with, with your current counter. Uh, so let's forget with this in n for now. Let's, uh, let's put it uh, a little bit to the side. Um, and, uh, I think just, um, you can continue your approach and I think you're very close to figuring it out, I think. Okay. This is what, what I had before. Okay. I have an open equal to one, close equal to one and the total, uh, is equal to zero. Basically one, uh, the, one, one close one and then offsets the open one, that's why I have a total of zero. 
And in this case, I have open of um, open of one. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, what you were doing at the at the very beginning, um, of of this, uh, you you are totally good here. So let's just focus on on this counter here that you have. Oh, okay. And um, and this this boom actually because this boom may may be important, right? Um. So this okay. is actually pretty important. So so I, I, what will happen to this open or this counter if uh, we keep adding or or there's more case scenarios, right? So let's try to like add a few more parentheses and try to see. What oh happens. oh, I got it. Because when we hit this point, it, it doesn't matter what is being added at the end, right? Oh, 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 it does matter. Let's, let me think, let me think, let me think. Okay, yeah. don't give it away. Okay, um, <laughs> okay. So let's say, let's, let's discuss in here. So at this stage, okay. And if it looks like this and the next one comes back like this and then and then the open would equal to negative two, which is, uh, which is another boom. However, however, if we go to different direction, Let's say it, this is one of the case that we can come across. However, if another case where it's looking like uh, this, yeah, so that would be actually okay. Uh, or let me hold on, hold on. So, or this is actually still not okay, right? So this is still a not okay case. What what would be okay, what, what 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 would be okay would be looking like something like like this. And that would be okay, and in this case, uh, even we add some more ending in here, it would not be okay, unless we adding the open parentheses that we have subsequently closed it. That will be okay. Um. Mm, yeah, if, if, if that's the case, maybe we can decrease. I mean, if we have a uh, open the negative two in this case, and then we we'll subsequently close it. So if we negative two um, plus one, because we offset the last one. So this one is negative one. Um, okay, okay. So, and then on the other hand, on here will be negative one keep minusing something keep minusing some number in this case it's minusing one two three four minus like five let's say so just keep going to the wrong direction uh okay so okay um so when we close it okay so when we close it and um okay maybe we can reset the counter somewhere when we close it when when, when the number become negative we can start it count it we can start it over to count Yeah, let's try that. Let's okay. Try that in an uh, example. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. That uh, uh, get your confirmation. Thank you. So, <laughs> I just said let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not sure actually. So, okay. Let's say, um, so let's say, uh, in this case, I'm gonna uh, carry forward from here. So. Now the number is negative. I'm gonna reset it. Reset it to be zero. And uh, the next one, let's say, looks like this. So again, the open is equal to still negative one. So I'm gonna have some global variable keep track of how many negatives I have. And then now still negative. I'm gonna reset it again uh, into zero. And uh, okay, the next one I'm gonna come across will be um, let's say uh, like this and open. So now I actually open is equal to one. 
Um, and then the next one I'm going to have is um, maybe it looks like this. And then in this case, the open is going to be two. Right. And then next one, let's say I'm, I'm the one I come across will be like this. So I'm going to decrease the open. Decrease the open equal to one. Let's say this is the end of story. Uh -huh. And so I have a leftover at the end, which is a plus, uh, which is a plus one. Also, I have a negative one over here. I have a negative one over here. So essentially, if I add it all together, I have a one plus one plus. So I have, so the answer will be three in this case because uh, I got these two guys not matched. Also, I got that guys not this guy's not matched. So this one, these three uh, parentheses in the middle, they are not being matched anywhere. That's why I think that might work. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, if you are, you, yeah, this is gonna be big over n, and also for uh, space complexity, it could be a big over one. If you're okay, yeah. I'm gonna, if you think it's good, I'm gonna code it up. Yeah, let's code it up. Okay, perfect, thank you, thank you. So, let's see, I have a, uh, that's what we discussed, I have a uh, open variable, uh, which I'm gonna initialize it as zero. Uh, also, I have a, um, let's say, a match, or I could just say unmatch. Unmatch is also zero, which is a global variable that I keep updating. So this one will be a global variable, or as you keep updating. I think the global is, the, the open is uh, like a reserve word. Oh like yeah, that. so uh, maybe O O P N, and this is gonna be it can be reset. Oh, also uh, what we just discussed. So if the text, the given text is empty string, we're gonna return uh, zero. And also I don't want to forget that if at the end I'm gonna return the unmatched, the number of unmatched. I will call it uh, n. Maybe I call it un, n unmatched or n. Or num, or oh, um, and unmatched. Just correct. So this one gonna return at the end. So okay, and okay, let's scan through the string. So for uh, parentheses, I'm gonna p in the text, and okay. So if if the parentheses that I'm I'm given is equal to a um, open the parenthesis and then else means is this is close one and what I'm gonna do is to um, uh, the open open plus equal to one so I'm keep adding the number of open while when I come across the end uh, the close one what did we do in here um, oh uh, oh, and in that case, I'm gonna subtract from the open like this, and then and also at the end, if open is the negative number, negative number. So what I'm gonna do is to add it to the number of unmatched. Uh, oops, okay, okay, like this, and also I have the open. We set it to be zero. I think uh, let's briefly walk through to see, make sure the code works. Um, yeah, let's let's look at this example here, uh, the one over here. So I have given the open the left open parenthesis open equal to one. Okay, and then the next case I have a close parenthesis, which is in this case is going to be zero because I subtract from it. And then it's not negative, so I can move on. So now I have another one comes comes in, so it'll be negative. So this is the boom happening. Actually, the boom actually what we did was to update the unmatched. Uh, actually, the boom in here is unmatched equal to plus one. Also, uh, open is zero. Yeah, this is the reset that we talked about. And then now I have another one comes in, which is the open parenthesis. 
uh, which is close parentheses. Um, so actually, so, uh, yeah, so the close one I'm subtract from it. So it's, uh, uh, it's another negative number. Uh, yeah, so this is, we're doing this again, right? And then the next one, so um, what is coming in is the open one. The open one, we're gonna open, uh, it have the open variable equal to one at this point. That's exactly the way we just discussed. And then now, if another open is that basically become two. And uh, the next one, we have a close one. So the open, oops, so I'm missing something. So at the end, I'm gonna uh, have uh, something is unmatched plus the open. Excellent. I think. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think this is <laughs> this is maybe the way to go. Yeah, let's let's um, let's try it. I think I'm not sure. Uh, oh, oops. I just uh, have a. Yeah, I I actually saw that. I didn't want to stop you from from doing that. You have that uh, in your in your code. Yeah, nice. it looks good. Excellent. Wow, you're you're in good shape, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think um yeah. Well, well, for a little bit of feedback, I think your your problem solving skills were really good. Um one thing that you're doing really well is taking hints. Um you build on them. So you you listen to that and then you build on them and that's how you were able to get to the and match and open uh, quite easily. Um, and then, yeah, one thing that I, I would recommend, uh, okay, a couple of things. Um, yes, you went over the example and that was good. That actually made you come with the algorithm or, or but one thing that I, I've been recommended by, by, some, by some friends is to uh, write, write some pseudocode. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, in in this problem it doesn't happen, but in other problems it may. In this, in the case that when you're doing like a loop or some data structure, you and you're writing it down, even though you already have the algorithm in your mind, uh, there's two things. One, you get locked in into that using that data structure that you're already working on, or do, or using that kind of looping. And obviously you can refactor it, but that usually takes you like more time and it might be a little bit, uh, like you will end up debugging your code um, when it's not necessary. And two, when you're writing your algorithm here, the sooner the recruiter or the, the interviewer can help you out and, and possibly mention, oh, I think uh, maybe that loop shouldn't shouldn't be here or should be something else. So, so that is one thing. Um, another thing that I don't think it's an issue in most com places, but uh, so I have a friend that is working in water looking at Google and he's uh, he's a level six, I think. And he interviews people and he was telling me how he interviews specifically. I don't know if you're interested in Google, um, possibly, or I get it. He said a couple of things in the sense that um, code readability. So um, for instance, in, in Python, you would want to have like spaces here, right? Um, so he says that um, you kind of can't tell the level of, of, the, of the programmer by the way the code looks. Um, and he may not fail you for that, but he definitely considers it. Like it's definitely a note there. Um, again, I don't think it's an, it's a big of an issue, but yeah, at least for Google or at least for that case, that is a thing. So uh, he mentioned that and he mentioned of more descriptive uh, variables. And also um, it, it doesn't matter what you're gonna use for name your variables, for, but for instance, like camel case or underscore, but like pick one, right? In, in this case, it's kind of like none of them though, right? So it will be like either like something like unmatched or in Python technically usually is uh, uh, lowercase. 
Um, okay. So again, yeah. Sorry. Quick question. Quick, quick question. 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 So, uh, and and thank thank you for this very very valuable uh feedback. This is this is not unimportant. It's huge importance that I'm not aware of. I don't have any friend working in Google, so that's why there's no point to probably criticize my code <laughs> so far in in prompt. Is your real the first one? I I, I interview like forty fifty people already, already in in prompt. Wow. So. Yeah, I've been here for like for months already, actually. So, and question for you is, uh, do we have a preference on camel case or underscore? Okay, so interviewers usually don't, um, but it depends on the language. So Java usually uses camel case, uh, Python. In Python, you have the, what is called, I'm gonna put it here in line 20 uh pep8 right or pep uh, this is um uh let me find pep well you, you can go that's basically how you are supposed to uh it gives guidelines and and pep8 or or google uh python uh standard and it kind of tells you the guidelines but again he doesn't he told me that he doesn't really care so for instance, yeah, uh, you might be using either PEP or, uh, or something else, but as long as you're consistent, right? So if you put uh, one lowercase here and one camel case here, then that's really, that's not really good. I am a huge fan of uh, camel case because it's shortened. I don't need the underscoring. I don't like underscoring because it's too long. I'm a mm -hmm. huge fan of uh, Camel case, but I do get your point where you say small n and a big u. Yeah, I think that's more readable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned about the spacing, right? The spacing. Also, you mentioned about the consistency of the uh, the styling. So what 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 other uh, uh, criticism that you can give it to me? I, this is really yeah. important to me. Yeah, of course. Uh, let me try if I remember. I actually wrote notes on that. Um, if you you have time. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Um, I actually have an, an interview coming up, so I'm really scared about that. But um, let's see. Yeah. So he mentioned. Okay. So he also mentioned that specifically for Google or specifically for him, he likes taking uh, a sliding windows problems. A sliding a sliding window um, and a little bit of trees as well. Trees graphs. But uh, studying Windows, um, he says that a lot of people do dynamic problem, pro programming questions, but uh, he doesn't really. Um, uh, what else he mentions? He wrote, he told me about a book, Elements of Programming Interview. Um, when he told me about a book, I thought that he was talking about the, the crack in the coding interview, but he said Elements of Programming Interviews. So, um, what else did he say that I can? Yeah, that's that's basically it. And depending for the level that you're interviewing. So, um, so for instance, if you are interviewing for entry level, how how much? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how many years of experience do you have in like uh, programming so far? Yeah, so that's a good question. I actually started programming. I mean, not, not I mean, as a finance professional, so we have to do programming here or there. But most of them like like a VBA kind of thing. So like a, it's not like a really um, serious about. Uh, serious oh, but, but, but as long as in the title, it has something similar, like what, uh, how many years counting that actually? Yeah, I, I've got around two years. It's not a lot though. Okay. And how much recently, how much of actually coding or programming? Yeah, I got really serious about coding starting from uh, the beginning of this year actually. Oh, I see. So you're all fresh. See, like, because we don't do this at work, right? So I'm having to um, pr practice and relearn all of these things. Um, exactly. But, exactly. but yeah, in that case, yeah, SDE, SDE one. And in that case, they won't ask you really much for systems design. I'm also have an interview for systems design. Um, but uh, systems design, it will be good to know a little bit about it. In some places, even though I was applying for entry level, they asked me a little bit of basics at least. So if you're not checking systems design, I will check for that. Uh, in what, uh, for coding, yeah, he said uh, lead code. 
Um, he gave actually a few resources uh, I can share with you. Um, so in Litco, there is this guy that had uh, like a curated, I, I don't know if you have the premium one. Yeah, yeah, I do have a premium one. Oh, you have a premium, okay. Well, in that case, yeah, you can do by, uh, yeah, I, sh I should get a premium one, but he mentioned that. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So to, to try to uh, see, try to make sure that I am able to understand the patterns. So what is this? Is this an array problem, a backtracking problem, dynamic BFS, BFS, intervals? So um, as soon as you understand the problem, that is a good thing. Oh, oh okay. And when talking to the interviewer, um, the reason why uh, writing pseudocode is crucial at the beginning is, uh, well, I already said this, but um, they help you, they can correct the errors in your algorithm before you start coding. But not only that, um, it also converts the um, interview into more of a conversation. Because when you're already, especially when you're in the last rounds, um, they don't want to keep hiring people. They don't want to keep interviewing, right? Every time that they do like a super day or something, they have to take like an entire team. So uh, basically what you want to do is uh, see, um, they want to see if they like working with you and you want to see if you like working with them as well. So, so by turning this into a conversation, then they are also more involved in getting you to the right question, right? So, so that's also why you want to try to do a, the, the pseudo code first. Um, yeah. Quick so question for you about pseudo code. Um, so when we ask, when we write for the actual code, we need to ask for permission. Basically, I ask permission to you that do you think I'm okay? I'm good enough to code, right? So uh, do I need to ask permission when I write something as a pseudo code? Oh no 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 no. So he mentioned. So, so if, if you saw when I was working, I was putting like method one or like my, my first stage, right? And trying to figure out like uh, examples, whatever. And, uh, and then, or, or cases or cases. And then uh, I'll try to see, okay, so the steps that I will take are this. And I'll do like loop over these numbers or this way, uh, blah, blah, right? And the idea of that is that if I do like I did at the beginning, loop over one, one point zero zero one to seven, then the interviewer can uh, jump there and be like, yeah. So I will check out the, your loop, right? And then I will be. And the idea is also to write this. Um, it's complex because Python is already very similar to Sudoku. Yeah. But the idea is, but the idea is to uh, try to write it as in English as possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the biggest <laughs> advantage of Python is already code, and then we can <laughs> copy of lines and then directly use a real as a real code. Yeah. Oh, uh, another thing that the Google, but again, this is for Google. Google is really hard, right? Um, so our components may be easier, but what he said is uh, I explained to him how I'm interviewing for Twitter right now. And he said, oh, I would have not passed you because in my case, um, I did not remember how to call the ceiling function. So I basically just implemented a one-liner of uh, solving for that. And he said, um, the reason for that is that when you are rich interviewing for Google, you need to know your language. Um, meaning that you need to know the standard libraries and how to call, call them and, and use them. Um, and he said that a lot of people try to use like C, C++ or, or something else because they, they think that it's, cooler or, or whatever. But then when you're coding, you see that they don't know the language very well. So the idea is to use the language that you're most familiar and also get familiar. But again, this is for Google. For Twitter, I didn't re I didn't remember the, the actual function. Um, he actually coded it for me and uh, I passed I passed that interview, so. Okay, so yeah, Google is maybe more picky about the styling or the naming convention. Yeah. Uh, you pretty, mentioned pretty that, tough. yeah, the, the spacing, I until this point, I never pay attention to it. That was a, such a big deal. For example, the yeah. spacing. Now I need to pay more attention about this spacing now. Uh, it's more readable. Yeah. So yeah. So spacing reliability. Um, 
if your code, because a lot of the, the bigger companies are doing less lead code just for the sake of competition, but more for um, more larger pro problems. So my previous problem was a little bit easier, but the, uh, I had to, uh, like if you're doing something that has a lot of ifs, and he and also the guy from Google said this, if, you, if I see that you have a lot of ifs, 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 and you didn't put all of that in a function and you're calling the function, then I'm going to mark you down because uh, your code is not readable. Uh, again, this is for Google. In my case for Twitter, um, I, I mentioned this because I, I didn't want to run out of time and mentioned to him, uh, this section, I'm going to put it in a, I would put it in a function. Um, just for now, I am putting it here. Um, but as a function, what I will do is I'll take this as an input and I'll return this. And he was like, okay, yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah, so uh, putting things in functions, if you need to, right? In this, in this case, you don't need to, but they will probably, if they ask you for a problem that has a lot of ifs or things that are repetitive, then he will want you to put it there. But again, this is, this is Google and that's a hard one. Um, aside from that, I, I, I don't think I, if I think of anything, we can, we can share on LinkedIn and I'll just write you on uh, definitely. a message. Yeah, I'm, yeah definitely. I'm, I, I, I really do want to connect with you. Uh, you are super helpful. I, I interview a lot of people in Pramp, uh, but you're, you're, you're really helpful. <laughs> Thanks. That feels, that feels nice. Um, yeah, that's me. Okay. And I do want to share my experience with uh, interviewing Google. Actually, I did interview with Google uh, around two months ago. Oh, you did? Uh, I did, but uh, uh, I, I can share with, with you my, uh, with my story. Um, so I didn't pass. I didn't pass them. Unfortunately, I uh, I, I get tripped off on the second round. So the question I got asked, I applied to Waterloo. Uh, Google office in Otolu. Mm -hmm. And it, that was back in, I think back in August. Um, so I, I, the question I got asked was a object design problem. Well, uh, how was the, what, what did it say? Or how was the problem? Yeah. So here, here it goes. So he asked me, um, code up a Python iterator. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was iterator. Oh yeah, that's that's a Python class. It was um, so it was so embarrassing that one. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it, it, okay, um, that was the second interview. Uh, yeah, that was uh, second phone screen. Yeah, I passed the first one, but I didn't get past the second one, unfortunately. Yeah, so so this is exactly what my friend referred to then in that case. So the idea is that um, uh, you need to know some concepts of programming languages, right? And not only code some stuff. So I think your problem solving skills are great, but for instance, uh, you should know what an iterator or iterable is, right? Iterable is basically uh, in object programming, uh, you work with objects. Uh, and iterable is an object that can be iterated through. So in this case, um, we have a text, right? So this can be iterated. You can do a for p in text. In Java, it will be the same. Um, in Python, everything is an object. You also should know this, right? Everything is an object. Even even um, a equal one. This A is an object. It's not just, it's not a, a place in memory for the number one. It's an address in memory for an object that has the value of one. Um, so the idea is that when you're, yeah, when, when you're doing classes, um, every, uh, when you create an, um, so an object is an instance of a class, right? Um, so when you're creating a class, let's say, uh, people, um, these classes, they all have like secret methods. They're called special methods. And uh, you should uh, study this a little bit. And yeah, th this this will help you actually, uh, specifically for iterators in Python. Yeah. And you can define a function. Um, uh, you can define how you want the iterators to work. 
Um, but yeah, so these are these are. I'm trying to find. I, I used to have this uh, resource of uh, really cool things from Python, but I cannot find it anymore. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you if uh, if I find it. Yeah, if you come across but, it, uh, drop me a a, a message on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so these are special methods. But again, this is only one instance of Python, right? So um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of nuances that the Googlers will ask you because they are they are really <laughs> they, they, but again if you did Google and you did okay you could interview for any other like Amazon um, or whatever right I uh, and at least you can get some experience or just keep practicing I think keep, keep practicing and reading more about the programming language uh, you can find a, a one place where they go into the, the details of the programming language. I don't know what your timeline is. Uh, the way I did learn everything about programming, about Python, is um, there's this book. I don't remember. I, I think I have it in my library. It's called Data Structures and Algorithms in Python. And I went through it completely. And um, this, this does. It was uh, really good because it tells you about um, uh, how to work with data structures and algorithms, but in Python specifically. Um, yeah, that's that's. I think that's that's very helpful. I must say that's very helpful. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you have a, a upcoming. I haven't seen your uh, friend request on LinkedIn yet. Uh, I don't have, I really want to uh, get connect with you. Uh, so wait, wait, oh, wait sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I ju I just sent it to you. Wait, when okay. is your next interview? When is your next interview? Oh man, it's this Friday. Oh, which company it is? Uh, Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Uh, you mentioned Twitter to me that you passed the, the interview already, right? Yeah. So this is the last round. This is the super day. Okay, lovely, perfect. Well, good luck. I, I think you will, you will ace it. Um, so that's a tutor so. in tutor in, 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 in Canada. My yeah, yeah, tutor in Canada, the remote. Uh, so uh, that that is the writer. There is actually a few writers. Um, uh, Sia and Goldwasser. Um, yeah, this is actually such a good book. Um, and it was not hard to read. Uh, it's, it's really, it, 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 I would recommend it, uh, to oh, know this, the ins and outs. Oh, this um, is an actual book. This is an actual book. Yeah. It's an, I, oh. I, I found it in the library when I was studying on, on my castle. Do you, do you go through some sort of, uh, uh, YouTube videos, uh, for learning those data structure and algorithms? Um, well, you, I, 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 mm -hmm. go ahead. yeah, the way that I, I learn most of the Python stuff is through, um, videos, um, videos and YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I know. Um, it's the same to me. It's very hard. Uh, so I read this book. It's funny. I read this book four years ago, uh, when I was younger <laughs> and, uh, um, I was able to go through it. I will go to a library and read it. Now I don't know if I could uh, because now my I cannot concentrate very well and and I find videos much like much better. But no, uh, to be honest, the issue though is that so I've taken Coursera classes, uh, Udacity on algorithms, data structures, a lot of videos. Um, I have found some that are pretty good, but none of them have been as in depth as as this book. Um, so I don't think you need to, but I think it will help if you're going to go for something like Google. But if you're mm. going to something like Twitter, uh, even Huawei, um, I, I, I don't think, you, yeah, I didn't need to, to be honest. Do you have to do lead coding for, for, for Huawei? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but it wasn't really that hard. 
Oh, okay. um, yeah. And it depends on the department that you go to. Uh, some friends, the, the, the way they got hired, the, they, they were given an assignment, like create this kind of game. And she had like three days and then she returned it. So, like so, she had to, mm -hmm. so she had to learn about a new API or like libraries and then how to implement it and then implement it. Oh, okay. So like a, like a tech home assignment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's oh, for, cool. for Huawei. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's actually, um, not, a, not a bad place to get started, but also, yeah, but yeah, that, that's it. If I think of anything, I'll let you know. Well, <laughs> yeah. And, and if you want to uh, practice with me before your real interview, yeah, let me know. I, I, I hope that I'm being helpful to you that I improve your coding style uh, a little bit and uh yeah keep me posted on your, your on 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 your on yeah your, uh, actually, interview with possibly tomorrow like do you have time tomorrow uh yeah yeah for sure what time what time works for you uh i think same time seven yeah that, i think that should be okay we can we can sit down again and then i can do this again yeah yeah um um i can either ah if you don't mind like a lead code from Twitter, if you don't mind, you, since you have the premium one, I don't have the premium one. Yeah, I can I can select one uh, which is most <laughs> frequently asked for you, and then yeah. uh, and then we can. I'll, I'll now can, find can... one for you. Too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we can do this again. <laughs> right. well, Sounds good. It, that, okay. that helps you. Yeah. It was All good. Right, good meeting you. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Give in touch. Yeah. Okay. Bye.